Hey YouTube, I'm here, and uh, today's the day after Mother's Day, it's May, anyway, it's the day after Mother's Day, and uh, today I'm going to transplant some of my tomato plants, the He's couple right that here. I have ready, my Siberian, my early Siberians, and uh, they're about the only ones that are big enough to transplant, and they're still pretty small, but uh, I'm ready. It's warm enough out. And I'm ready to start giving these guys some of my compost that I've been keeping quartered up. So, stay with me. Uh, you probably see the grow bag behind me. That's what I'm going to be transplanting. It's right here underneath you. So, alright. It's time to begin. Alright, so here we are. It's a uh, bad looking misery from last year. So I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this up a bit. Pull some of the weeds that are already starting to grow out out of it. I'm gonna leave them leaves in. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and take the dirt out, stir it up a bit, and put it back in. I'm just gonna put it in this this other little container I got. So let me grab my shovel and everything and we'll get started. Okay, so I've got my shovel and my uh, rake thingy. It's for breaking up the clods and stuff. But I'm just going to take some of the dirt out of here and just throw it over here for now. Just getting it out of the way, basically. So, these grow bags have actually turned out to be a pretty good deal. I got 10 of them for 10 bucks, 10 or maybe 15, I'm not sure how much it was. I think it was 15 after after shipping and everything. And they've lasted a few years now. I've only actually broken two or three of them. And it's because of my own fault. So they've turned out to be pretty sturdy. And they grow decent plants. down a little bit. I've probably used this dirt for, well, two or three years now. It's the stuff I put in it when I first got them. It's a good sandy mix, but it just needs to be revived. So I'm going to fix it up with some compost and few other things that have grown custom in my garden, like azomite, helps put all the trace minerals back into it. You know, when you're growing in a container, you gotta, you gotta put the trace minerals back into it. It's not like growing in the garden where there's already rocks and stuff, there's already rock dust in the garden, like in the ground. Not in your, not in your pots. I don't know. There probably is. I put some in. There, so, anyway, let's get this dug out, and I'll show you what I put in the bottom. Wow, I've actually got roots down the bottom. <laughs> oh, where did 
I grow here last year. Huh, it washed off. I think I grew squash here last year. No, squash was behind me. What did I grow here last year? I'm going to have to pull up some of the videos and find out. No, I had banana peppers right behind you, and that's the bag that I broke. And I had Roma tomatoes back there. Squash behind me. I'm wanting to say I had cucumbers here. Alright, I got more dirt out than I can do anything with, so that's a pretty good base on the bottom. And there's earthworms in there. Alright, so give me a few minutes and I'll get what I'm going to put in here. Alright, so here I've got a couple handfuls of brown leaves and green grass. And what I'm doing, I'm putting them together and breaking them up together and this will go right up underneath my garden soil, my potting soil, and it will attract all the worms. The worms will eat it, break it up, and even bring it to the top. The roots will grow down to it, and it will just be a good underlayer. Plus, it will help fill my bag up, and it's cheap and free and all that good stuff. But it's nutritious. It's good for your plants. And it'll break down and, and revive that soil. And as it breaks down, it feeds the nutrients to everything. So it's kind of a kind of a lasting fertilizer. And it's a good filler. It's free. Pull out the twigs. Twigs are okay, but I prefer not to have them in there. They take too long to break down. The grass and the leaves together, they'll uh, sort of cook up somewhat quick. And then if you add the, the twigs and stuff into it, it'll, it'll take a little bit longer. I don't want it to take too long. But there we go. I got a good little base down in there. Just a thick layer, that's all you want. Not too worried about seeds being in there. You're going to get weeds whether you like it or not, but this will be so far under the soil that it won't even matter. I'm just going to start throwing a little layer over top of it. And this will just put a layer between where I'm starting at and where I'll be putting in the other nutrients that will be in the soil. This is going to be pretty good. It's going to be a good year. I can see it already. Bringing back some different plants that I haven't grown in a couple of years. Gonna be good. I'm actually bringing back a good one. Not dropping off any hints yet, but you'll see. It's gonna go in the big box. So the best hasn't come yet. Get a good little layer in there. And go ahead and wet it down. One thing I have found about these grow bags is I cannot water them 
enough. They take so much water. I mean, it actually just rained last night, and this, this dirt in here is dry. So even when it rains, I still, I still have to water them. Which is good, because I like to water them with my compost tea. And my manure tea. Alright, that's a good layer. Now... Stuff here, a bit down in there, a little bit in the rest of the soil. Starting to get low on azomite. I'm gonna have to order some more. It's one thing that sucks about azomite is I can't get it locally. I have to have to order it by mail, have it shipped to me. Next, I'm going to put in some insect frass. This is another one I can't get locally. I don't know why. Nobody wants to sell insect poo locally. Put some in the other soil. And the thing about the... the insect frass is it kind of it is a, a really light fertilizer it's a 555 5 nitrogen 5 potassium and 5 phosphorus but on top of that it's got enzymes or or uh, chemicals in it that the I believe it's cockroaches let off, and it, what it does is it basically sends your plant into a defense mode, and it'll fight off diseases and, and things from the inside. It makes it makes it grow juicier so that the the bugs drown when they bite into it because it's so full of water. It just it's a I don't know, you'll, you'll have to look it up. I haven't read anything about it for years. But it's, uh, it's kind of become a custom to my garden. But here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start transplanting this. I want it good and deep, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole right in the soil that I just put in. And the roots will sit right on top of that that compost, the organic material. And then pack some more dirt up around the top of the plant. So the tricky part is always getting the plants out without damaging them. Yep, that's always the tricky part. And I hate clay pots. Did I tell you I hate clay pots? This is why. This is why I like to use plastic bottles. It's a plastic bottle I can just I can just crinkle it. And it'll come right out. But not a clay pot. It would have been nice if I hadn't watered this yesterday, but I just didn't think about it. I might actually have to break a pot. And that ring tapping against it sounds really bad, doesn't it? Okay. Well... I hate to have to do this. Ooh, that was almost bad. Alright, 
think I got it started. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Uh, I didn't. And I don't want to pull the plants by the roots. What are you doing, Leo? Nothing, Dad. Just making some noise. That's all the deeper the roots went. Well, I thought for sure they'd be deeper. Alright, well. Nonetheless. Just plop it down in the hole. There we go. Slide some of the dirt over it. what you get for sniffing things you shouldn't sniff. Dogs, they gotta sniff everything. Pull the bottom leaves off. So I'm actually gonna fill the dirt up over them. So, here we go. I like to start by filling around the outsides of the plant. That away. Once I get all the dirt around the plant, I can just take my hand move it in. Anyway, I can still be gentle and can kind of push these two plants away from each other so they got plenty of room to grow with their own their own nutrients. Get into hand mode now. Put it in by hand. And when you transplant, you always want to water them good. Water them down. You can't overwater them when you transplant. Well, you can, but. Uh, so long as your container has drainage, you're not going to overwater them. Make sure the leaves are up and out of the dirt. You don't want it to cause blight. I did, I did get them a little close to the dirt. You don't normally want to keep them close to the dirt, the bottom leaves. But these are going to grow up. And as they grow up, I'm going to add more dirt around the bottom. So they're going to grow good roots. But there, these are transplanted, and to seal the deal, to seal the deal, looks like an E. Early Siberian. Ta-da! They're transplanted. And they've actually been sitting in the window. So they're pretty much already hardened off. Good to go. Um, not so crazy about leaving them with beads of water on them. But they're sitting here in the shade. So they'll be good. Anyway, thanks for watching. And this is how I've 
transplanted these plants. I'm probably going to do all the other ones a little differently though as the as it gets later in the season. So keep watching and I'll show you how I do the rest of them. Anyway, it's my only day off this week so I got things to do in the house but I got one of my plants transplanted already and a few more to go. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hit the like button and drop a comment. Have a great day.